how's everyone doing? Thanks everyone for watching so far. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. My head is still not functioning. What the heck is happening? So at the end of the last episode, um, we got pulled back to the head office, extra line, basement type area. <clears throat> These were really hard last time. Thank <laughs> you. 
Elevator kept going up slowly and squeakily. After an unusually long time ascending, the door opened to an area that only felt like an emergency exit. Turning several corners with Turner, I can finally see the court for a solemn looking gate. The court is just like how it looks on TV's live trials spacious, quiet, blinding big white lights, three statues sitting high in the middle of the stage. All the audiences are already seated and dressed in the same cloak. Okay, Mr. Crawford, the trial should start in a minute as soon as they set up the connections. Now please sit here and wait. Sound check one, two. Okay, we're good to go. Play the music. Good evening, citizens beloved. Sorry for the waiting. We're honoured to be representing all of the other great ones who can't join us here today. And like always, we will be hosting the upcoming trial remotely. Quiet, please. That's right, some of you may not know, we're not going to be the judges here. That's what dictators do, not us. Instead, we'll let the people be the judges. Every civilian randomly invited and gathered here today will be deciding the fate of our defendants together. And rest assured, your identities are well protected. Speaking of which, I've seen you all put on your anonymous cloak. Good, with that done, be absolutely free to express your opinions today. And remember, every one of them matters. Okay, let's bring our first defendant on court, shall we? Here I call Katya Ivanov. Please come forward to the stage. Uh-oh. Katya, the citizen's beloved, the defendant from she is accused of stowing and more importantly, conspiracy with deeds. That's right, that dangerous cold-blooded terrorist group who attacked our Bay Area. She was arrested during a random road check. We found she didn't have a proper ID card to prove her citizenship. Plus, in the follow-up Q&A, she seemed to be lacking in the basic knowledge of Eden. The two, these two things indicate a high possibility of her entering the city illegally. As for her connection with Dee's, we'll come to that in a minute. Now, Katya Ivanov, do you have a lawyer with you, or are you going to defend yourself? I don't know any lawyers. What happened to your Dee's friends? Are they just going to leave you like this? Like I said before, I don't even know what Dee's means. Very well, it would be too late for you to confess now anyway, right? Which leaves you no choice but to be your own defender. Any objections? No. Okay now. Would you please explain to us why you don't have an ID? Let, let me remind you there. Every citizen in Eden should have one of those. I... Sorry, I did trespass. But please hear me out. The place I was living. It's... Stop there. If I get it right, you just admitted stone. Yes, but sorry, we don't have time for every criminal's background story. Let me guess, maybe you're here because you don't have enough food to survive in your city. We get that a lot here, and really, that's not how things work here, and every citizen knows it. Am I right? Your information, it's not like we don't have enough people starving here. Why should we let you, a foreigner, in to steal our food? No, I won't steal. 
just tell me how you want me to work. I'll do anything. That's enough. You're just making yourself embarrassed. <laughs> Let's just get to the next question, the important one. Are you working with D's? I know absolute nothing about this D's thing you keep talking about. Never have I had any connection with it either. Why are you trying to blame this on me? Do you even have proof? Excuse us for a minute. Quiet please, of course we'll give our reasons for that. Citizens beloved, I believe all of you have seen the news on TV. Sorry that we've been keeping it from the public for some time. That's just because we didn't want our people to panic before we found out what's really going on. In short, we discovered that the bombing materials in use could only be out of the tank Therefore, considering the timing of your trespassing, we suspect it's more than a coincidence that the bombing happened just after you entered the evening. Bombing? Why would I come all the way here from Womansk, a city in the far north, to do such a thing? I came here only hoping to live a normal life. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't even know what these is. How could I possibly help it do anything? Exactly, you just reminded us that. Maybe you did know nothing about Dees. However, Dees might know you. What? That's right, maybe you just helped them without knowing it yourself. Maybe you've just been used. So why don't you tell us how you managed to get into Eden? That should give us a hint. Oh, and names are even better. Uh, I, uh, just tell us who planned this for you and who's with you. I suppose you didn't come here alone, did you? No, I, uh, I don't know if this is his real name. A man called Joseph drove me here. Joseph, is he the one who planned this for you? No, he's just a driver, I think. Well, does he live here in Eden? I don't know, maybe. Who does he work for? If you mean the people who planned this, they're in Womansk. Oh, are they? Why would they help you in the first place? Are you a spy? For God's sake, no. I paid them to get me out of there. Yelling is not going to do you any good. Sorry. <sighs> okay, I think this is as far as we can get. Do you have anything more to ask? The result may change a lot based on what you've shared with us. I'll take that as a no. The citizens present present will decide to get into your sentence tomorrow. Alright, before we run out of time, let's bring our second defendant, who we believe is a member of D's, and hear what he's got to say. Uh-oh. The start, please take Katya, Katya, even old dad. Here I call Awan Halit. Oh, that's not that's good. Please come forward to the stage. Okay. Quiet please, he's not confirmed to be a Deeves member yet. But still, let me tell you why we think he is. Why don't you tell us what you do, Mr. Hallen? I work at the Skyline as a food inspector. What was that before? I worked at the Landline. That's right. Surprised, huh? How can a man like him be a member of Deeds? How can a food inspector betray our trust like that? We wanted to prove it wrong. We really did, but the fact just said otherwise. So here's what we found. As soon as we knew the bomb's materials were coming from the outside, the Skyline immediately became our focus. That's because before the bombing happened, already noticed there were strange unidentified items being put on our skyline. Clearly someone was trying to work with some food inspectors to smuggle them into Eden, and these items all carried some sort of black powder with them. Yes, this is what you think it is. Anyway, our next move was to go through the list of skyline inspectors and try to find any suspicious personnel. Then the name Awan Halim caught our attention. As a former landline inspector, his performance was impeccable. But why would a great worker like him suddenly ask for a workplace change to the skyline right before we started to find those unidentified items? Could you repeat your reason for application for us here again, Mr. Allen? Sure, there's just nothing left to challenge in the in landline. So much text. I know, I know, it might not sound that appropriate for him to say, but we didn't think much at the time. After all, he'd been the landline daily star for quite some time. However, with the attack, the timing there just seemed too good to be a coincidence. So he decides to carefully calculate if the item numbers add up at booth 220 where he works. And as it turned out, there was indeed something vanishing from his belt. Excuse me, may I say something? Oh sure. 
I won't be having a lawyer, so I'm just going to defend myself there. Alright, go ahead. The assistant, I've been doing food inspections for years, and one thing I've been told from the beginning is that you can't possibly know for sure how many items will pass through your booth. We have hundreds, if not thousands, of booths, and they all connect to a huge sorting machine on the front lines. After our gatherers there put food in, those items will get mixed, sorted, and sent to other smaller machines to repeat the same. By the time those items arrived at a specific booth, the total number will be unavoidably randomized. Let alone the whole sorting process is automated and quarantined for the sake of safety and fairness, meaning that nobody can do that. So you can see, it is impossible to do that kind of calculation. Unless, they've been lying to us about this sorting system the whole time. Oops. I've got to say I'm impressed. Well prepared and nice try indeed. But to be sure everything Mr. Hallam said about the sorting system is true. But still, we had successfully found a solution to that. We'd love to share it now, but sadly our time is up today. The trial will continue tomorrow. Now, my beloved citizens, you may go to Grand Hall on the first floor and get your food. Get Eden Government. Dismissed. Wow, the plot thickens. Alright Mr. Crawford, seems like it's not yet your turn today, or maybe you're just invited here to be a judge. We can really use a young aspiring inspector's point of view apart from that of the citizens. Uh, what should a judge do by the way? Simple, you listen and you vote. Two or three of you, two or three will be asked to share their opinions there. Haven't you watched live trials on TV? I, I rarely watch them. Oh fair enough, now get, you get to try it on the spot eh? Yeah, I guess. Okay then, I'll see you after work tomorrow. Uh, where's the shelf? Oh. Can I not consume straight off the shelf? Cool. To beds. I don't know how to feel right now. Sad, relieved, or scared. All I know is that invisible fist is wielding again mercilessly.
Okay, this isn't so bad. It's much easier without the other person. Maybe I'm speaking too soon. again. It's just a tiny bit, that's frustrating. Since they do multiple bosses at the end. Hi there, are you getting used to work? Yeah, somehow. Good, time for the course again. You may sit here, Mr. Crawford. Hopefully they'll reach some sort of conclusion today and meet you after the talk. Good evening, citizens beloved. Second day into the trial, it's time for us to hear what the judges think. But first, the defendants. This one shall be done today. Here I call Katya Ivanov. Okay then, where were we yesterday? Oh right, you admitted your trespassing and gave us a name. Hmm, Joseph, we'll definitely look into that. Although you could totally just make that up. So what else do you want to tell us before we hear it from some of our citizens? I don't know what to say except to repeat the truth. I didn't make Joseph up, that's just what he told me. And I know nothing about you. I travelled a long way from the Max to Eden just to seek a new life. Never did, never did and will I mean any harm to Eden or his people. That's all. Okay, I think we've heard enough of that. Now it's time, let's roll the dice. <laughs> 54. Citizen number 54. Please come forward to the stage. Thank you for your honour for having me. Uh, I see things in a very simple way here. It doesn't really matter where she came from. Did she break the law? Yes. So is she guilty? Of course. As for her connection with D as well, as long as we exile her, she won't be able to do any harm to us anyway, right? We'll just have to strengthen our border control, is all I'm saying. Thank you. Next. Two fourteen. This is the number 214. Please come forward to the stage. Hi, Your Honour and everyone. I think there's no need to argue if she's guilty or not since she's already admitted it. The question is, should we let her stay? And the way I see it, we should not. If anyone could just come out to our streets and line up for food, how are we going to survive? Think about your families. Do you have enough food on your tables? Do you want to make your share of food even smaller? Do you want some foreigners to make our food supply stations even more crowded? I certainly don't. Thank you. Next. Wow, in his hospitable country. Poor capture. 77. Just the number 77. Please come forward to the stage. Uh, I don't know, sir. She's guilty, that's for sure. But I mean, don't we need people in the front lines now? Maybe we can put her there or something. Yeah, she may be dangerous if she's a, like, from these. Oh, stupid me. If she's really a terrorist, who knows what she'd do to our food there. We don't want to take the risk, do we? 
Sorry. Let's just exile her for good. That's what she deserves anyway. Thank you. Next. Seven. This is the number 177. Please come forward to the stage. Your Honor and everybody, it's clear that she trespassed, so I'll skip that. So though D's, though, about D's, though, there's one thing she said that caught my attention. Didn't she say she paid for those people to get her here? That's true. These people must be experienced, right? So why doesn't she have an ID, even a fake one? There must be something wrong. Maybe she's not being honest with us at all. Maybe she is indeed a member of D's. But either way, we can't have her in either. Thank you all, beloved citizens. I think we've all made good points, especially the last one. But you should know, it's never up to me to decide what's good or bad. In a minute, we'll have one or two rounds of voting. You can use the panel on your seat to vote anonymously. Before that, though, catch it, Ivanov. If you want to defend yourself now is your last chance. What's wrong? Nothing. No matter what I say, it's not going to change the result, is it? Well, if you keep saying things that don't matter, I don't see why it'll change. Our judges are, gonna, are not going to be lenient just because of your kind words. You broke the law. You broke the law. I have nothing to say then. Thank you for your cooperation. Staff, please take her off the stage. Now, every judge that is present, please choose. Oh, it was waiting. I'm such a tool. Definitely not guilty. Yay! <laughs> I'm not convinced she's going to win. The result is guilty, 249 votes against what not guilty, one vote. Could just be a missing but we've had that before, and the result won't be affected by it anyway. Well then, since she's found guilty, the next voting is going to be about the sentence. Two possible options inside based on Eden's Law, Eden Law's Sturway section. Labour. that one too. Thank you all for your cooperation. I think we have a verdict. Poor Katya. Here I announce Katya Inerald's guilty of stowaway is sentenced to exile. The execution will be will take place in one week. Judge's decision is final. It's closed. Next, we'll continue our conversation yesterday with the other defendant. Please come forward to the stage, Owen Helen. I've got to say, not that many people can be as calm as you just standing there, Mr. Helen. Not necessarily, I'm just bad at showing emotions. 
well, we'll see. So yesterday you questioned the possibility of us knowing if there was some well, items taken from your belt. Is that correct? Yes. And the reason for that is our distribution system mixes things so hard that it's impossible to know how many items will arrive at my booth in the first place. Right, about that, here's our answer. Indeed, you were right about the distribution system. Normally one can never tell if things are missing from the belt because no one knows the correct sum. But you know, we always go to great lengths when we're dealing with terrorists. So this time, what we did was asking every food inspector in Skyline but you to go out for one day off. And then everything became simple. The sum total of items that day decreased. It must be you who took something off the belt. And to our surprise, it worked the first time we tried. Being exact, the sum total was down by one that day. You took it, am I right? That's... that's true. It would mean you sacrificed the entire Skyline's manpower for a day. Exactly. Like I said, we spared no effort. But... it still doesn't make sense. We have every officer who took part in this to prove it. There's no running away from this, Mr. Allen. Just admit your D's membership and cooperate with us. That might be the only way our judges would go a little bit easier on you. Even if I did take these off the bill, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm with D's, does it? What are you trying to say? You only took... No, you stole food for yourself? Alright, yes, you got me. I'll admit, I did take some food up from the belt for myself. But again, you can't say I'm going to use just like that. Mr. Helen, if you're trying to convince us here, you'd better explain everything right. It's the timing of your application for the Skyline, your misbehaviour as a food inspector, and what exactly you took from the belt. Okay then. At this point, I think I'm sharing the truth. It's the only way I can help myself in this trial, isn't it? Of course. Okay then, the truth. I ask for transfer only because I'm sick of being underground and food there is just nothing special. What do you mean, nothing special? I mean, nothing worth taking. I've always known how easy and safe to take food off the belt, but why would I want to steal canned food when I keep, could eat much better meals every day? So that's why I wanted to go up there where there's rare food. Not because I'm working with D's or something. The timing there was merely coincidence. And the fact I took food off the belt doesn't really conflict with me being a good food inspector. Why? Because I'm not the only one that's doing it. I've heard of it and seen it with my eyes. Many inspectors, good or bad, are also doing it. And not just the inspectors, the government. That's enough, Mr. Hannah. Please don't go astray from the case here and don't try to spread unproven rumours. Just tell us what you took from the belt so we can move on. I was just trying to tell the whole truth to the judges. Stop calling it the truth, Mr. Hallin. Last warning. What food did you take? An apple. Well, just as what we found out. Sure you did. I said I'd be telling the truth. Alright, all I know is that your crimes can be confirmed to me. Crime, not crimes. Yeah, we'll see about that. Whatever I did, I did for myself, not these. You'll have your chance to defend for the last time tomorrow. What? Staff, take him down. Beloved citizens, we resent people that abuse their power like Mr. Hallam does. We'll never allow that kind of things to happen under our supervision. Because we know how crucial a fair distribution is to the health of our society. What Mr. Hallam did is the opposite of that and he even tried to spread rumours to make himself look less evil. I believe you are all smart enough to see, through that, see that through. But still, what he did back there can already be considered an overt thought crime to some extent which is not much better than what these did. Please take that into consideration when making your decisions tomorrow. Alright, I think that's all for us today. Apologise for such a long trial. Like yesterday, you now go to the Grand Hall and get your free food. Eat well and have a good night. Dismissed. So you had to listen to Mr. Hallam's speech back there. Many defenders just broke down and started talking gibberish like that. Don't let that get to you. Alright, have a good night then. To bed. Okay, maybe it's the last day here tomorrow. It doesn't feel like the same game anymore, it feels dark and foreboding. It broke my heart to see Katia end up like that. I wish I had the courage of our 
I know what he said is true, but what am I going to do even if I did? Nothing has ch ever changed since that day. What's that? Better call Quinn Lawyer. A card was slipped under the door. Lawyer Quinn? Do I even have a phone? No. To work. So many coffins. What colour was that? Yeah, that's fine. Shit, two six one happens to go. Two six one is fine. Yellow.
best. Good afternoon, follow me to the court please. Alright Mr Crawford, if everything goes right today should be the end as Alan Halloween's case is closed. Good luck. Good evening citizens beloved. Following what we discussed yesterday, today we'll hear from some of you and hopefully wrap up the trial. Okay, first let's bring the let's first bring the defendant out. Here I call Alan Halloween. Mr. Hallam, yesterday you admitted your misfeasance as a food inspector after you provided our evidence. Are we still shocked and sad? We are still shocked and sad to see a good government lawyer turned out this way. However, we'll never mitigate the punishment because of who you are. I'm not asking for mitigation anyway, I just want a fair verdict based on evidence. You'll get what you want, you know, what you deserve. Now let's hear it from some of our judges, shall we? Staff, let's get that dice rolling. Five. Citizen number 125, please come forward to the stage. Your Honour and everybody, honestly I'm shocked to hear what the defendant did. It's the first time I've seen a food inspector who is not satisfied with what he's already had. And with so little food we civilians are getting, he still wanted to steal from us. We should never allow him to work in the government again, to say the least. He's definitely going to have got to pay more than that. Thank you. Next. One four seven, a maximum. Citizen number one four seven. Please come forward to the stage, sir. When the defendant said all those things about the other, how the other inspectors were like him, for a moment I believed him and became so afraid and confused at the same time. But luckily, you said to him and disproved it right away. I knew it couldn't be true. You would have noticed it for sure if it was real, and you would never let that happen, right? I don't understand why the defendant said those things, but never with good intentions could one lie like this. Please make him realise how much wrong he's done. Thank you. Why do I keep doing that? Next. One seven two. This is number one seven two. Please come forward to the stage. Uh, glad to be selected, Your Honour. I just want to say I agree with the last speaker, and I think the problem with the defendant is not just his, his reasons, but also his attitude, the way he speaks and acts, is clearly leading to corrupted thoughts. We all know it's more dangerous than taking things off the belt, don't we? Let's eradicate that before it grows worse. But anyhow, I don't think he should work for the people again. Once polluted, can't be trusted. Thank you all, beloved citizens. You made better points than I ever imagined. Oh, I can see how eagerly Mr. Hallam is trying to speak for himself there. Let's hear him out before we move on to voting. What do you have to say for yourself at last, Mr. Hallam? Will you stop me from talking this time? You know we can't promise that, but since it's your last choice, we'll surely be more lenient. Well then, dear citizens, I can see how you still remember what I said yesterday. I won't try to stress how true they are again, because that might just look like a desperate call for sympathy, if not worse, but I do have something else to say. What I did, taking food off the belt, is wrong, but why is it wrong? Have you really thought about that? Not just because the law says so. Go deeper than that. Why is this the law says so? If you, all, if you all can go through that process for once, you'll see what I'm trying to say here. That's all. That's all? I thought you were going to give us a lecture or something, so that we can le all learn from you, a criminal teacher. That's fine. All right, staff, please take Mr. Hallam off the stage. Dear judges, let's start the voting, shall we? Guilty. Don't want to give ourselves away. people think he's not guilty.
<laughs> Not many more, though. Okay, I believe this rod doesn't come out as a surprise to anyone. A few voted against it, though, don't know what they were thinking, but it's needed and one can never get away with stealing food. Now about the sentence. It's needed or there will be two possible voting options. One is immediate dismissal, which also includes a permanent ban on food trafficking for any government positions. The other is a $50,000 fine. And also, because of Mr. Hallam's current thought condition, there will be a compulsory educational program for him to take. Failing that will result in further prosecution. Okay, let's get started. Um, fine. Well, it's the closest it's been, but it's still not close. <laughs> well chosen, the result is just like what I expected. Glad the majority was not affected by the de defendant's digression. So here I announce, Alan Hallam, guilty of misfeasance, is sentenced to dismissal. The execution will take place after he has completed the education program. The judge's decision is semi-final, further prosecution may occur. Case closed. Dear citizens, there's one more thing before we finish. Uh-oh. We've just been informed that a new suspect has been confirmed, and he's right here with us. Another food inspector from our skyline, Ned Crawford. Staff, please bring him to the stage. So, Mr. Crawford, we thank you for your service up there for the people. However, just to be stressed, no matter who you are, no injustice will be allowed on our watch. Sorry, but what did I do exactly? Do you still remember how we found out about how one had his misfeasance? Oh, yeah? Good thing is, this is not the only one we checked. What? Yeah, I know, the cost of one operation like that was extremely high, so we couldn't do many. But it would be too stupid to think D's only had one spy out there, don't you think? So we chose a few more targets that caught our attention. And there was you, the son of Benjamin Crawford. That's right, his father was among the men who put our entire city in danger 15 years ago. Mr Crawford, we always wondered why they even let you become a food inspector in the first place. Guess we didn't worry for nothing. You are not that different from your father, are you? Tomorrow we'll officially press charges, with more evidence, of course. So tonight you may want to contact your lawyer if you're going to have one. Is that clear? Yes, good. Staff taken down. Uh-oh. Dear sisters, I'm sorry this trial may still go on for a few days. Please understand, that, like always, you may now need to head to the Grand Hall to get your free food. That's the reward you all deserve. Dismissed. Crawford, I honestly didn't expect to hear any of, of that about you today. Guess there's another lesson for me to learn. Anyway, if you have a lawyer to call, now is the time. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, great. Follow me. Here we are. Feel free to pick one and dial. I'll be waiting in the back. Oh, and sorry about those speakers. We have to make sure it's not abused. You can talk with your lawyer in private tomorrow, so relax. Oops. Here we go. 266-5248. Hello, may I help you? Uh, yeah, may I speak to Quinn? Your name, sir, is Ned Crawford. Okay, a moment, please. Hi there, Quinn speaking. Oh, hi, I just called to ask if you're available to help defend me tomorrow, and also how much does that cost? Tomorrow, that's a short notice, but hold on, let me check my schedule. You know what, Mr. Crawford, I just happen to be free tomorrow. Lucky you. It's for the rate. Well, it's case by case, so I can't really tell right now. Why don't we meet first and discuss it tomorrow? That's good, but what if I don't have enough to pay you? Don't worry, we accept payment by installments. Okay, good, I'll be at the court tomorrow. See you then. Okay. Sounds like you have a deal. Let's head back. This seems like an excellent place to stop. Thank you very much 
Well then, just for your information, work still continues tomorrow. I'll meet you after that, like always. Thank you very much for watching please join us in the next part out tomorrow please remember to like comment and subscribe as well awesome thanks guys